The final item of business is Members' Business Debate on Motion 13889 in the name of Sandra White on the 75th anniversary of Age Scotland. And this debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons. And I call on Sandra White to open the date, uh, sorry, to open the debate, <laughs> not the date, the debate, <laughs> for up to seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. It really does give me enormous pleasure as the convener of the cross-party group and older people age and ageing to open this debate on the 75th anniversary of Age Scotland. I'm grateful to colleagues across the chamber who have supported the motion in my name uh, to allow this debate to take place. And I'd like to welcome those in the gallery who were some were there last night. Uh, you're welcome to the Scottish Parliament. Presiding officer, we're here to celebrate 75 years of national and local people's groups and organisations uh, in Scotland since 1943. Uh, itself a remarkable achievement, and it's also an opportunity to pay tribute to the spirit and vitality of the many outstanding men and women who have made this work possible. Older people who have dedicated their lives to the development and operation of older people's groups and organisations. Groups which have enriched the lives of older people in our communities across the country and organisations which have helped to shape government policy and legislation to improve the lives of older people in Scotland. These are all groups and organisations which continue to make an enormous contribution to advancing positive views of ageing in later life. Indeed, at last night's reception, we met groups and individuals who did just that. And I really would like to thank Age Scotland and the Chair, George Fowkes, uh, Christine Graham, and the Minister who actually who gave a speech which was so welcoming, and many other organisations who took the time to attend and make the evening such a great success. Presiding Officer, Life for Age Scotland began with the establishment in 1943 of the Scottish People's Welfare Committee. The founding members included an array of organisations active at the time, the Church of Scotland, Edinburgh Old People's Welfare Council, the Indy Old People's Welfare Committee. Sadly, at the time, there wasn't a committee in Glasgow. However, in 1954, a Glasgow Old People's Welfare Association was established. It's now known as Glasgow's Golden Generation, and they did win an award last night, so I'm very proud of that fact. It's in my constituency also. Uh, also, the Scottish Central Council of Women's Rural Institutes, Scottish Council of the Women's Citizens Association, and the Scottish Trade Unions Congress. Uh, we also saw the formation of Aid Concern and Help the Aged, whose merger in 2009 led to a new charity, Age Scotland, dedicated to improving later life for everyone in Scotland. It is worth reflecting for a moment, presiding officer, on what some of the landmarks and achievements have been over the last 75 years. Legislation to make the provision of home health service a duty on local authorities, the exclusion of amenity housing from the right to buy legislation in the 80s, the introduction of free nursing and personal care for older people in Scotland, the Scotland-wide free bus travel scheme for older and disabled people, providing free travel on local registered bus services for people aged 60 plus. And uh, probably just a wee plug, but I really would like to mention Simon Ritchie from Age Scotland, who has been carrying out a major engagement exercise with Transport Scotland to gather the views of hundreds of older people, which will directly shape the new national transport strategy. Uh, and I welcome Simon from Age Scotland here tonight. Legislating making it unlawful to take a decision on employment and training based on a person's age, rather than their com competence. The Adult Support and Protection Bill to help stamp out the abuse and mistreatment of older people who may be vulnerable. Reshaping Care for Older People, a programme for change. And in 2015, the Scottish Parliament's Equal Opportunities Committee investigated age and isolation, the first formal parliamentary examination of loneliness anywhere in the world. And having been deputy convener of that committee, it's something that I am very, very proud of the work that we carried out there. There are a range of life enhances activities which take place in Scotland every week, which are facilitated by older people's group. In my own area, and I say this with great care, the party pluckers, which are a music group, uh, stained glass making, knitting and crocheting blankets for conflict victims, 
uh, all carried out by party annex in my constituency. We all have the lunch club in the church hall or the neighbourhood centre, bringing older people together to share a healthy meal and companionship to the camaraderie of older men and women, meeting in the men's shed to use their skills to make or repair things, just have a blether over a coffee or a cup of tea. Other ones, as, uh, including people remaining active and healthy through body-boosting bingo, uh, which can improve their strength and balance, and keeping fit with walking netball, it can involve bringing the generations together by enabling young people to visit older people in their care home. And one recent activity which is really taking off, and that's walking football, allowing men and women to get fit through regular exercise. Now, this was famously depicted, I think, if people would remember, in an episode of the popular BBC Scotland comedy, Still Game, complete with Isa as a goalie. Although I would not advocate the on-pitch violence that uh, occurred on that particular occasion. So we plug for a still game there. In my own constituency, we have a, a new bay on the block, as I might say. We have weekday wow factor. And wait for this, and I've been to some of these. We have weekday wow factor, which has discos, which is absolutely fantastic. Zip sliding, speed boating on the Clyde and many others. So we're not all just centrally sitting there, basically, presiding officer. And also presiding officer, in the brief time that I do have available, I've only been able to provide a, a short and I hope valuable snapshot of the work of Age Scotland, which I know parliamentary colleagues will want to expand further on this evening. However, I do want to close with a quote from Professor Sir Stuart Sutherland. To say Scotland is facing an ages crisis is a myth. While it is certainly true that Scotland, along with the rest of the world, is getting older, that in itself does not constitute a crisis. And I think that has to be repeated, does not constitute a crisis. Professor Sutherland was challenging the view, as Age Scotland and others have, and other organisations too, have done for the past 75 years. Older people are not a burden. They are not a drain on our society, and they're not a drain on our public services. Instead, rather than repeating this, as often said, sometimes in the media, even on the bus, on the t TV, whatever it may be, we should celebrate what we know to be true. Older people are an asset to our society and our economy. They're the lifeblood of our communities, providing the backbone of charities and volunteering and acting as a reserve army of unpaid carers. Let us join together to congratulate Age Scotland on their 75th anniversary. Thank them for speaking up for Age and wish them every success for the next 75 years in being the effective voice of older people in Scotland. Thank you very much, President Officer. Uh, we move to the open debate. Speeches of up to four minutes, please. I call Jackie Bailey to be followed by Bill Kidd. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Could I start by congratulating Sandra White on securing time for this debate? I have to confess to being slightly nervous and indeed exhausted listening to her list of activities um, that I'm sure I'm going to have to engage with as I get older. But, you know, I have to be honest, I'm not sure about zip sliding at any age. Presiding Officer, no matter how much we may fight it or how young we feel on the inside, we are all growing older albeit some are growing older more disgracefully than others. Um, for many, the prospect of old age and everything that accompanies it can often be quite daunting. I actually think it's quite wonderful and liberating. Aside from the knowledge and wisdom you acquire because you've simply seen more, um, it, I like the fact that you can get away with saying what you think. It's wonderfully liberating. I'm not sure that all of my colleagues regard that in the same light, but there you go. Um, let me start by thanking Age Scotland for all of their work, which has meant that actually thousands of older people in Scotland were given a voice when they needed it the most. And for 75 years, day in and day out, Age Scotland have championed the needs of older people, making sure that care, support um, has been on offer to them if and when they have needed it. Um, can I also make special mention of, as Sandra White did before, Lord George Fawkes, who is the chair of the board, um, he was, of course, the first director of Age Scotland. He tells me that wasn't 75 years ago, though, but you only have his word for it. Um, let me pick out a couple of the initiatives that I particularly want to highlight that Age Scotland have been engaged in. Firstly, the Housing Project and Warm and Well Project. They've meant that Scotland's ageing population are much better equipped 
to stay in their own homes, which is something we all want, and are able to cope with ever-increasing fuel bills. Secondly, through their persistence, hard work and dedication, Age Scotland's helpline service claimed over a half a million pounds of previously unclaimed benefits for older people in 2017 alone. That, I have no doubt, will have dramatically improved the quality of life for thousands of vulnerable people and helped to educate others about the benefits that they are entitled to. Recent research we know carried out by NHS Scotland on social isolation and loneliness showed that the older we get, the lonelier we feel and the less likely we are to have frequent social interactions with both our family and indeed the wider community. But loneliness at any age is debilitating. But for those who are less mobile or perhaps who don't have family members living close by, feelings of loneliness are inevitable and all-encompassing. So through their many social events and Good Day Calls service, Age Scotland have taken on the fight against isolation head on. So the support of, that they give to over a thousand local communi community groups across Scotland is so important. And I know that includes groups like Dumbarton Age Concern and the Vale of Leven Age Concern. And it gives many people a reason to get involved again and get involved in their local community. So we can't begin to thank Age Scotland enough for this kind of work, but it's equally important that government stands alongside voluntary organisations to ensure that we all have dignity in our old age. The Labour Party have demonstrated this commitment to older people time and time again, and I am proud to have been part of a Scottish government that introduced free bus passes um, and indeed the central heating programme way back uh, at the start of Parliament, and I'm pleased that this government has certainly continued some of that today. I'm also proud that we were responsible for the introduction of free TV licenses. I have no control over the content of the television programmes, but nevertheless, I still think it was a valuable thing to do. Increases to income support, second state pensions for low earners, and winter fuel payments, to name just a few initiatives. Older people in Britain wouldn't have had this support if it hadn't been for a Labour government, and I want to see that continue. I want to wish um, Age Scotland a happy 75th birthday. Um, I hope that they continue to receive substantial government funding and that we continue for the sake of both the current and future generations to make sure that our older people are a priority. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Bill Kidd, followed by Jeremy Balfour. Thank you, <clears throat> pardon me. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I too would like to congratulate Sandra White uh, for bringing forward this important debate to Parliament. I'd also like to wish a happy birthday to Age Scotland as it reaches its 75 years as the national charity for older people in Scotland. Well, 75 years, that really is quite something. Although looking at my colleagues around the chamber, maybe less to some than it is to others, um, sorry, Sandra, I wasn't looking at you. Anyway, it is, it is, however, 75 years of supporting older people in Scotland tirelessly and working hard constantly behind the scenes for many of us who don't realise just how much work is actually put in to the support that they do provide. One-to-one um, -one support, projects and community centres, or indeed providing insight on the needs of older people to us here in the Scottish Parliament. Uh, Presiding Officer, Age Scotland's impact reverberates throughout Scottish society. And true to this, just earlier this year, Age Scotland gave invaluable insight to the Committee for Economy, Jobs and Fair Work on the level of internet use um, across the country and came up with a figure of 67% of over 75-year-olds don't use the internet at all. That further was used to explain the impact of bank closures on this demographic in our country. And this insight was drawn on the committee's final report, and I think it's a very important one. And this, I also believe, illustrates how impactful the charity's work is for we parliamentarians and for big ones as well. That was a joke, thank you. In terms of society, <laughs> if you have to tell, if you have to tell people, it's a bit of a problem actually. But there you go. 
In terms of societal impact, what, makes, uh, what stands out the most for me, however, is the contribution made by Age Scotland to directly improve older people's lives by working on the ground in communities across Scotland. In recognising the charity's 75 years of work, it is important to highlight the charity's rich history. Formed initially, as Sandra White said, in 1943 as the Scottish Older People's Welfare Committee, they have supported older people through significant events in the 20th century and into the 21st century. This includes at the end of the Second World War and the birth of the National Health Service and introduction of the welfare state. Aside from this, they have witnessed momentous technological changes and the charity has adapted and evolved to continuously meet and promote the needs of older people. Of relevance to my constituency of Glasgow Annesland, previously the oldest demographic constituency in Europe, Age Scotland's work has been particularly pertinent over the years and my constituents have frequently found, high, highlighted the positive impact of the charity on their own situation or on that of family members. And moving forward to 2018 and beyond, the charity now works with a network of over 1,100 local groups across Scotland providing projects, amongst other services, for people to become involved with. Many of these projects tackle two of the biggest issues, as was mentioned earlier uh, by Jackie Bailey, for older people, for all of us, but for older people in particular of isolation and loneliness. Community-focused activities have a tremendous impact in quali improving quality of life. Through partnership with Glasgow Life, Age Scotland organises health walks across Glasgow. Not only do these keep people's fitness up, they also create community and belonging. And I think this project and many others have the capacity to be life-changing and I encourage my constituents to see if there is any activity or project that they would like to participate in. Age Scotland has a lot to offer. Looking forward to the future, it is projected that by 2041, the over 75 age group will be the largest in Scotland. So the work of Age Scotland will be relevant for an increasing number of our fellow Scots. And with this in mind, I would like to finish by not only thanking Age Scotland for all of their dedicated work, but I would also like to thank them for their continued advocacy of older people's rights and welfare into the future. And just throw in a word of my own, you're better off old than deed, so just get on with it. Thank you. I was just thinking maybe you can give me written notice of your next joke, Mr. Kidd, with <laughs> appropriate timings marked. <laughs> uh, Jeremy Balfour, followed by David Torrance. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I start by uh, wishing a happy birthday to Age Scotland? to thank them for the reception uh, that was held last night and to thank Sandra White uh, for bringing this debate uh, this afternoon. Um, I, maybe for the first time and the last time, I fully endorse every word and particularly the final comments uh, made by her in her speech. Age is a very interesting issue. Um, I visited recently um, a lunch club for what was called Old People um, and I think everybody in this chamber now um, except perhaps Mr Arthur, would be welcome at that. And so lunch clubs uh, do start younger and younger. And then at the other extreme, you have my uh, father, who is in his late 80s, who is still working three days a week uh, for this government. So uh, age is of, often very relative. But Age Scotland is a charity, as we know, who work to ensure that the voices of older people are heard. They want to support both their rights and their interests so that each person can live a full life and make Scotland a better place for older people. And I think uh, Sandra White is absolutely right. We need to get away from the mentality of saying old people are a drain on society, on our resources. They often bring so much more benefit and wisdom and we need to tap in on that far more as a society. From the Scottish Government's website in June 2017, just under one in five, 19% people in Scotland were 65 or over. This is now compared to 16% in the mid last year. Here in the Lothians, in 2012, nearly 20% 20 of the Lothian population was aged 65. But in 20 years' time, 
the figure will be 72%, which I find, and I read that, almost an unbelievable figure. And so there are going to be challenges, and we need organisations like Age Scotland to be heard and to give us the support that older people will require. As a number of members have already mentioned, loneliness is one of the biggest problems facing not only the older population, but other sectors of Scotland as well. But Age Scotland is one of the leading organisations doing amazing work to tackle this. They celebrate ageing through funding and supporting over a thousand member groups run for and by older people across Scotland. An example of this is the Men's Shed, which is one of the member groups' initiative. It provides space for men to meet in a friendly environment and take part in activities they enjoy. It provides a space where you're able to learn about the services that are available to them. This enables a vital community where friendship can be made and a place where older people are able to get the support they need. And I think one of the challenges, as challenges for society as we go on is how do we engage with people who are lonely, who have very little contact with other parts of Scottish government or civic society. It, 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 uh, somebody was giving an example recently of um, a hotel which put on a lunch for five pounds. But the people that came were wo those who were already going out regularly. And I think we need to spend more time working out a strategy of how we engage with people who perhaps are lonely but are simply being ignored. Let me finish, Deputy Presiding Officer, by again uh, wishing a happy birthday to Age Scotland, to wish them well in their work, um, and to again just thank Sandra White for um, allowing us to debate this subject tonight. David Torrance, followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd first like to thank Sandra White for securing this debate in the Chamber today and welcome this opportunity to celebrate the 75th anniversary of Age Scotland to bring attention to its vital role the network plays across the whole of Scotland. This year marks 75 years of amazing work and dedication from all the staff and volunteers, past and present at Age Scotland, who ensure the delivery of so many invaluable services through its network of over a thousand groups all across Scotland. These organisations make sure the voice of our older people is heard provide support and care, encourage health and well-being, and help to tackle loneliness and isolation. Working in partnership, they identify opportunities and de develop new initiatives which challenge inequalities and help to improve the quality of life of older people through a range of delivery methods, including self-help, one-to-one interventions, group services, and a wider community engagement projects. In Fife, 19.9% of our population is of pensionable age, slightly above Scotland's national average of 18.5%, whilst the figure of people of working age falls below the national average. Comparisons of both Fife and Scotland's population projections show an expected large increase in the 65 and over demographic, alongside a large decrease in the 35 to 65 age group. The demographic of this country is changing, more people are living longer and healthier into old age than ever before. Whilst there are many upsides to increased life expectancy, which should certainly be celebrated, such as more children that will know their grandparents and great-grandparents, and the passing on of wealth of knowledge and experience of younger generations, an ever-increasing ageing population also presents many challenges for our communities. Living longer possesses many challenges, both economic and social, such as increased pressure on healthcare and social services, gaps in the job market, increased dependency on those working age, health concerns of individuals, and the ability to adapt to continuing technological change. <laughs> One of the major issues affecting our growing elder population is isolation and loneliness. We know that social isolation has a detrimental impact on the health and well-being of individuals and can greatly affect the quality of life of older persons, often contributing to a decrease in physical function, severe health problems and depression, a condition which sometimes goes undiagnosed or misdiagnosed in older people. In Kirkcaldy, we have many fantastic groups following the lead of Age Scotland, working in partnership to address those potential obstacles. One of these groups is the Grey Panthers, 
They meet weekly at one of the local community centres and gather together older women, ranging primarily from 75 to 90 years old, to chat as well as exercise their minds and bodies through gentle activities and quizzes. The group, which currently has around 30 members, has been running for many years and provides valuable social opportunities for its members. One of its members, a lady called Mary Walls, was the 2018 winner of Age Scotland Inspiration Award. These awards recognise people from all over Scotland who have made an exceptional contribution to improving the lives of older people. I have known Mary for many years now and can attest to her devotion and enthusiasm of helping those around her. She truly is an inspiration and much loved by not just the Grey Panthers, but by the whole community and a very deserving recipient of this award. Also in my constituency, we have Kinghorn Lunch Club, another group that encourages social interaction and tackles isolation through their weekly lunch club meetings. The group formed in response to a lack of opportunities for older people in Kinghorn. Many of its members don't have family and would often go several days without seeing or speaking to anyone. This club has provided a life lifeline by connecting individuals and building meaningful bonds. Groups such as these are essential to part of the social fabric within my constituency and Fife. Without their efforts, we'd be a lot worse off. They bring our community together, allow new relationships to be formed and have an enormous impact on our older people, whether as means of tackling social isolation, building relationships, developing skills or providing advice and support. In conclusion, President Officer, I'd like once again to thank Sandra Fight for bringing this debate to the Chamber tonight and to thank Age Scotland for their valuable contributions to individuals and our communities over the last 75 years and wish them all the very best for the future. Uh, before I call Mr MacArthur, there's still a few members who wish to speak in the debate, so I would be happy to accept a motion without notice under Rule 8.14.3 and extend the debate by up 30 minutes. May I ask Sandra White to move a motion without notice? Uh, motion moved. Thank you. Prime Officer. The question is that the debate be extended by up to 30 minutes. Are we all agreed? We are therefore agreed, and I call on Liam MacArthur to be followed by Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, that motion without notice is probably timely because I perhaps I need to start with a, an apology to you in the Chamber that uh, I may need to leave before the end of the debate as I'm due to host uh, an event uh, on behalf of Heriot Watt University later. By way of uh, atonement, I would extend a cordial invitation to all of you to join us in Committee Room 1 uh, later on. But can I uh, add my voice of congratulations to Sandra White, not just for securing this motion, uh, but for her valiant attempt uh, to snatch back the record from Oliver Munn for the longest ever parliamentary motion. Um, given the breadth, reach and significance of the excellent work done by Age Scotland um, now and, and, and in its various guises over the last 75 years, I think it's perhaps no surprise that Sandra White has found it difficult to avoid the motion turning into something of a mini novella. Um, but uh, it was wonderful to see the garden lobby packed out uh, last night for Age Scotland's 75th uh, birthday celebration. Uh, yesterday evening um, and I say that as somebody who was hosting a competing event somewhere else in the building but I was delighted uh, to be able to drop in later on uh, and catch up with Gillian Skews who heads up Age Scotland Orkney. Uh, this is an independent charity but a brand partner of Age Scotland has been working with and for older people in the, in the islands I represent uh, for some 25 years now as well as helping support older people to be able to live in their own homes for longer and enjoy a good quality of life with dignity and independence, Age Scotland Orkney is taking steps, along with other statutory and voluntary sector partners, uh, to prepare for the consequences of the current demographic uh, trends. Already Orkney has a population that is ageing more rapidly than the national average. Uh, trends suggest that over the decade leading up to 2020 uh, 2022, there will have been a 50% increase in the population aged 75 uh, and over in Orkney. Now, such a change would present challenges anywhere in terms of delivery of services. Uh, in an Orkney context, with population dispersed over a number of islands, some of them very small indeed, these challenges are obviously magnified. And this makes the work of Age Scotland Orkney, in collaboration with other partners, absolutely critical, allowing uh, the community uh, to benefit fully from, uh, as Sandra White reminded us, these assets uh, in our uh, community. But 
At present, this work includes a traditional home help service, Here to Help, which assists people with cleaning, shopping, laundry and a range of household tasks. Here to Care is a person-centred uh, care approach for adults who require some additional help with personal care, helping older people, as I say, to live uh, at home independently for longer. Age Scotland Orkney also runs a podiatry clinic with a fully qualified podiatrist offering a range of different treatments. And then there's the Dementia Hub, which I had the pleasure of visiting earlier on this summer. Officially launched in March, the hub aims to improve the quality of life for people living with dementia, their carers and families through um, uh, projects which promote health and well-being. Funded through the Life Changes Trust and Dementia Friendly Orkney, the hub is a one-stop shop where people living with dementia can go for information and advice about national and local dementia services, local groups and activities that can provide support for people living with, with dementia to live well in Orkney. And during my visit to the weekly drop-in session, it was immediately clear how much those attending the hub get out of the experience, an opportunity uh, for those affected by dementia, their family and carers, to share a cup of tea and have a chat or take part in some of the therapeutic activities, including a state-of-the-art uh, tover taffle um, or magic table, which was truly hypnotic. I also got the chance to get a better understanding of what life is like for those living with dementia, some of the many frustrations they experience on a daily basis and how much more care and attention needs to be taken in engaging with them. All of this excellent work, no doubt, was part of the reason that Age Scotland Orkney has been chosen to run Age Scotland's new National Good Day Calls service as part of the Independent Living Programme. The new daily phone service provides reassurance to older people and their family that someone will call to speak to them. 365 days a year, checking in to ensure they are well, offering support and a friendly chat, and in so doing, help, help tackle loneliness. The service has been running in Orkney for some years already, and those benefiting from it are in no doubt about what it offers. Margaret, age 73, the thing that matters to me is the peace of mind that somehow someone is checking that I'm okay and as I'm on my own. Or Bill, aged 80, the good day calls help me get my day underway with a cheery chat. Hopefully, this success will be replicated now nationwide. And let's face it, who couldn't look forward to a cheery chat from somebody in Orkney on a daily basis? So can I conclude by thanking all involved with Age Scotland across the country for the tireless work they do? And can I thank Sandra White again for allowing uh, Parliament the chance to recognise that work and wish Age Scotland all the best over the next 75 years, uh, during which time we're all likely to take more of an interest in the work that they do. Thank you. Can I remind members that just because we extend the debate by 30 minutes doesn't mean you have to fill it? <laughs> and I call Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Tom Mason. Thank you, presiding officer. I'm delighted to speak in this afternoon's debate and congratulate my colleague Sandra White on securing it. 75 years of campaigning is an incredible achievement and it is fitting that we celebrate Age Scotland here in the Chamber, given that so much of the work that the Parliament has undertaken since 1999 has been informed by the guidance and support of Age Scotland's outstanding efforts. Indeed, the merger which brought Age Concern Scotland and helped Age together in 2009 also brought together a combined 90 years of expertise, as well as a wide network of older people's groups and forums. Their successes over the last 75 years have been numerous. On topics ranging from transport to housing to healthcare to loneliness, Age Scotland has provided vital guidance on the Scottish Government's legislative programme and its impact on Scotland's older population. Most recently, the Government's revised housing strategy, Age, Home and Community, was actually launched at Age Scotland's office in August. Indeed, it would not exist in its current form without Age Scotland's valuable contribution to the strategy, monitoring and advisory committees. Housing choices can have an enormous impact on our lives as we age, and the strategy rightly champions independent living for older people within their own community better reflecting the needs and aspirations of older people. Working with MSPs, Age Scotland was recently successful in having the amendments to the planning bill it supports agreed at stage two. The revised strategy also intersects with other efforts in related areas, such as dementia and tackling loneliness, which Age Scotland is also very proactive in addressing. Of course, Age Scotland's work extends far beyond policy, and the most tangible impact in the lives of older people in Scotland is perhaps a network of over 1,100 local groups which host an innumerable range of activities and workshops throughout the year, as highlighted by Sandra White's motion. More and more innovative groups now better meet the diverse needs of older people across Scotland. 
a particularly exciting project which has taken root in my constituency, and I know they don't have a similar project in Sanders constituency, is the Garnock Valley Men's Shed, which is part of a wider network of Scottish men's sheds that Age Scotland has promoted. Men's Shed provides a space to relax over tea or coffee, indulge in pastimes, catch up with friends, laugh and be creative, which again contributes to a nationwide effort to reduce loneliness and social isolation. Age Scotland's report into the benefits of these groups, the Shed Effect, found they made an enormous contribution to men's lives, to promoting positive views of ageing and enhancing later life in Scotland. I have no doubt that Age Scotland will continue to champion initiatives such as these for many years to come. As well as celebrating success, we must also be frank about the challenges that lie ahead. Scotland's population is ageing rapidly, as colleagues have touched on. The number of people living with dementia is expected to rise to 120,000 in the next two decades, a challenge we must prepare and plan for now. Age Scotland have taken a proactive approach by launching its early stage dementia project, which provides free dementia awareness workshops for organisations across Scotland and information guides, an invaluable resource for individuals and organisations alike. As Scotland's demography changes, so too does our workforce. With one third now over 50 and people increasingly working into their 70s, uh, retraining and starting new careers in later life, or um, with reference to one or two of my colleagues, continuing careers in later life. Simultaneously, the supply of younger workers is falling and employers must be proactive to avoid skill shortages and shrinking talent pools. Retaining experienced and committed employees is a central facet of a proactive approach and AIDS Scotland has to date provided 180 Scottish businesses with practical, well-informed and legislatively accurate advice to help foster a workplace culture that is open, inclusive and positive about the benefits of age diversity. This work should be celebrated and replicated on an even broader scale. Presiding officer, as part of the Scottish Government's Older People's Strategic Action Forum, Age Scotland has and will continue to play a vital role in future-proofing all aspects of Scottish public services. The value of their contribution cannot be understated. I conclude by offering my thanks to the staff and volunteers who work tirelessly to promote a positive view of later life and support the well-being of older people. Here's to many more years of Age Scotland. Happy birthday. And now I've called the youthful Tom Mason. Followed by the very youthful Christine Graham. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. It is a pleasure to make a contribution to, to this debate on the 75th anniversary of Age Scotland. And I thank Sandra Wright for bringing, White for bringing the topic to the Chamber today. I think, however, I should declare an interest in that my age, I am a potential customer of, of Age Scotland. Although, fortunately, I have not had to call on the service thus far. I think it is fair to say that Age Scotland is a remarkable organisation with a storied history that spans not just a considerable time period, but also a great many changes in the cha challenges facing, faced by older people. When the Scottish Older People's Welfare Committee was formed in 1943, we were at the height of the Second World War. Indeed, it was formed only a few days after I was born. I was born slightly prematurely because the bomb dropped next door to the house. <laughs> Safe to say conditions are somewhat different today. As a population, thanks to the advances in medical care and technology, we are now living longer, largely healthier lives. And whilst there is, of course, welcome, it does lead to a higher demand for the care and services that our older people require. Even something like making sure that an older person has someone to talk to is so important. Isolation and loneliness, subject too seldom discussed. And I know that older people, we, older we get, the more difficult it becomes to meet new people and socialise, especially if we've lost a partner or spouse. However, in Age Scotland, we have an organisation that is unafraid to champion these issues, most notably through their men's shed, walking football, hiking groups and intergenerational projects, I wholeheartedly commend all of them and many others. Now that Age Scotland is at the forefront of efforts on a number of fronts, and today's motion points out a wide variety of these. From housing to veterans to warm and well, there are a great many ongoing projects that are helping people right across Scotland. In my region of the North East, there is a vital work going on across the board, helping people with financial and legal matters finding the right care homes, housing, and even energy tariffs. 
My constituents are well served by the support that the local Age Scotland team provides. Last night, I had the privilege of attending Age Scotland's reception here in Parliament. It was a great to meet some of those involved with this effort. And I can say, can say how fantastic it was to hear the passion they have for this work. And I am encouraged, but most importantly, grateful for their endeavours. Here in Parliament, their policy teams are instrumental in driving forward change, always willing and able to debate their challenges and opportunities, as well as the impact of legislation and all the work that we do here. So can I thank Age Scotland for everything that they do, for making sure that our older people have a home that suits their needs, for providing the advice on household issues that is so valuable to the pensioner, for doing their bit to ensure that no one gets left behind. I know, presiding officer, that if Age Scotland approaches the challenges of the future with the same determination that drive and drive that we've seen over the last 75 years, then our golden generation, which includes myself, is in the very <laughs> safe hands indeed. Thank you very much. The last of the open debate contributions is from Christine Graham. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I also declare an interest to, uh, to Tom Mason, particularly as I'm also a septuagenarian. And can I congratulate Sandra White on her role chairing the Older People, Age and Airing Cross Party Group in securing this timely debate and Age Scotland on its 75th birthday, which I had the privilege uh, to sponsor their event last night. But most of all, as others have said, the 1,100 local groups and volunteers working hard throughout Scotland First, it was an excellent move to merge aid, concern and help the aged into Age Scotland and especially to ditch the terms concern and help. In themselves are not bad things, but please, let's not always associate older people with problems. If I'm a problem, it's got everything to do with me, nothing to do with age. Of course, we have our problems that come particular with age, groaning when we rise from a chair or assume a seated position, creaking limbs, or a tendency to not suffer fools gladly and having long lost the desire to linger scantily clad before a mirror. But, and it's a big but, and here I am slotting in that I'm, <laughs> I bet you. I knew that set, set Kenneth Gibson's Heather alight, but, and it's a big but, and here I am slotting in. I am weary of being told I'm a demographic problem when I am, and we all are, a demographic plus. Give me an older people on the till at Tesco any day when I'm not competing with the grocery escalator to pack and pay in double quick time. Give me the older person in B&Q, the retired tradesman who will escort me to the appropriate tools for my low skill level. By the way, other superstores should also be commended, just in case I have to use them. Then there's grandparent, time to teach and sing after a fashion, old songs. My granddaughter, one of them, and I will belt out my bonny lies over the ocean as we cruise along. Uh, not my... here, Mrs. Graham, please. <laughs> as we cruise along in my open-topped two-seater Mazda, my last stab at youth, and then in reciprocation, we sing together, it's all about the bass. Stories read, stories invented, lessons on how to be friends with Mr. Smokey and when he's had enough. Special moments shared with grandchildren with their own special granny rules and non-rules and sometimes unadulterated mischief. I haven't told the parents about that. Of course we need support and some of us will not admit it and some do not have family units like me. And their age concern and local groups can step in. Men's Shed, which has already been mentioned in particular, have addressed the issue of isolation for some older men. In Peebles, this has hit an impasse as no site has been provided that's suitable for the premises. It has hit, as you say, a metaphorical brick wall. I wish it were a real brick wall. Anyway, the council should start helping them. And that good day call that's been introduced recently, very, very important, because not everybody is as lucky as I am. So it is as we all age, a mix of requirements changing over time. Most of all, those requirements require to be met through conversations with us, with older people, as Age Scotland does, 
the last thing we need is to be patronized. And yes, some foolish individuals, I'll not name them, have tried to talk down to me as if I dropped half my marbles. They were soon put right. So well done, Age Scotland, in getting the balance and the tone absolutely right. And happy birthday. Now call Christina McKelvey to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Minister. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. Can I thank all the members who have taken part in this lovely debate today, actually. It's a very lovely debate, but with a very, very serious message. Um, uh, the contributions have been both very helpful to me and very informative to the work I need to do in government. And a thanks especially to Sandra White, who's been a real champion in this, for calling for this debate to mark Age Scotland's landmark birthday and in the week where we celebrate International Day of Older People. But can I pay a special thanks and a special tribute to all of the volunteers who give generously of their time, and that's filled with that spirit and vitality that Sandra White talked about at the beginning of her speech. It's important that Parliament comes together to send an unambiguous message that we support and value our older people. Many of today's contribution, including Jeremy Balfour's, have cited figures around our changing demographics, so I won't repeat them. But the point is that there's going to be a lot more older people within the population in a very, very short frame of time. We are all ageing, and we're all an ageing in older workforce. Um, sadly, presiding officer, older now is defined as 50 and above, which really does seem far too young to me these days. Maybe we should look at that. Um, and we have heard from everyone about the, pos about the positive uh, impact that Age Scotland and its hundred, its thousand uh, and odd uh, groups uh, that it has in their network. We've heard about the great impact in the constituencies and how invaluable that has been to the MSPs in this chamber. But I suppose you want to know what is government doing? So we need to, in government, look at the opportunities and the challenges now. And Mahatma Gandhi said, the future depends on what you do today. So we've got a job to do. So the government is taking action. We have a minister for older people, although she may not quite be in that category yet. We are developing older people's framework, which we will publish next March, which will be co-produced by stakeholders like Age Scotland and many other older people's organisations. We are publishing something that's very important that's came through very clearly in this debate today, a social isolation and loneliness strategy before the end of this year. And we are working through the consultation responses to this. Um, and I'd like to reassure Jackie Bailey that we are taking that issue incredibly seriously. And we're also taking forward the Fair Work Agenda because we've got an older and ageing workforce. And Kenny Gibson mentioned the housing strategy and along with the Warmer Homes Initiative, Fuel Poverty and many other things, we're ensuring we have policies for now and for the future that maintain safety and security in the home. Other aspects of uh, where we are looking at in government is around about hate crime and we will be publishing a public consultation later this year following recommend recommendations made by Lord Brackadale on hate crime legislation in Scotland. And Lord Brackadale recognised that older people can be targeted by perpetrators not because of hatred of the elderly but because of a perception that they are more vulnerable. They should talk to some of the older people in this room because they're far from vulnerable. But he made a very important point and he recommended that the Scottish Government consider the introduction of a general aggravation concerning exploitation of that very vulnerability. He also recommended that there should be a new statutory hate crime ag aggravation based on age. So we are very open to the views on the best way forward and will consult widely on this and I'm sure Age Scotland and many of its partners will take part in that. Presiding officer, I recently spoke at the conference on elder abuse and I heard firsthand the heartbreak of such incidences of hate crime and uh, the um, abuse of uh, vulnerability on that older person and their families and we, we, we are certainly taking that seriously uh, indeed. But let's move on to social security because that's an important part of how we support people in their older lives as well. And we need to enable older people to contribute and thrive and we need to look after those who are unable to through ill health or disability. And we also need to make sure that the systems are in place to allow people to live as independently as possible for as long as they want or need. That's why the Cabinet Secretary for Social Security and Older People announced last week that in Scotland we will do things differently than the DWP when delivering the 11 devolved benefits. People will not be subject 
subject to undignified assessments carried out by private contractors, something we all welcomed in this chamber in the charter debate yesterday. We will treat people with dignity and respect. So, and in doing that, we will be ensuring that we, we address Bill Kidd's concern around digital by default. We will create ways to enable older people to engage with the Social Security Scotland agency in a way that works for that individual, and that can only be welcomed. The Cabinet Secretary also shared uh, the same aim to ensure that older people in Scotland have the opportunity to lead the best life they can and feel valued and respected and listened to, and I agree with her on that. Now, turning to some of the positive contributions that old people make, older, older people contribute in so many ways, unpaid caring roles, by volunteering, of course, by continuing to work. They act as a sandwich carer, not a term that I like, by looking after the grandchildren, as well as maybe looking after elderly relatives, or often with no financial support. And David Torrance talked passionately about local champions. It was a local champion in South Lanarkshire who brought about the Carers Act that we now have. And the Carers Act was introduced, um, the Carers Scotland Act was introduced um, a few years ago and took effect from April the 1st this year, 2018. And that's a really welcome development as well because we need to underpin the progress we make with legislation. So in 2018-19, the Scottish Budget includes an additional 66 million to support additional expenditure by local government on social care and hopefully that will help make a difference. But let's look at some of the negative perceptions. As a society, many of us are too quick to judge others. Stereotyping can be offensive, hurtful or even dangerous, and Christine Graham reminded us of that. Older people deserve better. They are not a homogenous group, just as younger people aren't. We, are all seen, we have all seen and heard incredible stories in the 70s uh, of people in their 70s running marathons or climbing mountains or just today winning Nobel Prizes for physics. <clears throat> These are amazing achievements, but maybe not quite in the reach of everyone. But maybe Jackie Bailey, when she does reach for that zip slide one day, when she actually reaches that older people's status. However, we need to say no to the relentless negative media we are bombarded with that says, once you retire, you're a burden or a drain in society. I seen nobody at the Age Scotland reception last night who was a burden or a drain on society. And many other barriers we talked about today, whether it was ensuring that we maintain concessionary travel scheme, the cheery chat from Liam MacArthur um, telling us about or the Orkney hub and the, the, the real benefits of um, public transport that people get. But I want to talk about very quickly, um, Queen's Cross Housing Association presiding officer. They have created a new intervention service, um, piloted uh, at Queen's Cross, funded by Glasgow um, Health and Social Care Partnership. I heard from Agnes, Mary and John, who have been supported by the service. They shared their compelling stories of the positive benefits that it has for them. The service provides rapid response in times of crisis or when high critical health and support needs are identified. It lasts up to six weeks to allow recovery or long-term support to be arranged. So let's celebrate Agent Presiding Officer because even if it was a bomb that brought you into the world um, like, to, uh, like Tom or it's, the, it's Christine Graham lingering scantily clad in front of her mirror, um, <laughs> getting older is something to, to be celebrated. It's not something that everyone is fortunate enough to um, achieve. So we should celebrate at a nation, possibly at a lunch club with Jeremy Balfour. That would be lovely. Um, and as a poetry fan, I always look to poetry sometimes for inspiration and in his poem Rabbi Ben Ezra published in 1864 and which will still resonate today the poet Robert Browning wrote growing old with me the best is yet to be I love the aspiration behind that line Christine Graham singing to her in her two-seater Mazda teaching the grandkids how to be fun and disgraceful um, is a great picture I have in my head. So, presiding officer, I look forward to working with all the organisations such as Age Scotland who champion older people's rights to ensure that the best is yet to come for Scotland's older people now and in the future. And I want to finish by saying happy birthday, Age Scotland. That concludes the debate and this meeting is closed.